Hi everybody, welcome to today's Facebook Live. As you can tell, it's Christmas and I'm wearing my nifty Scotty Christmas sweater. So um, we'll give it a little bit of time for people to get on here. I hope everybody is uh, having a good holiday time. I know we're still in this stay at home. And then um, today's presentation is going to be about the impulsive dog, the impulsive young dog. This is the dog who is now at an age, usually this starts at about four months of age and continues to develop as the dog ages if we have not helped to teach that dog impulse control. So when I'm saying impulsivity and imp a dog is being impulsive, what we're talking about is the dog who wants to now rush up, like run up to another dog, run up to a person, keep sticking their nose in, body bumping, body slamming, uh, jumping up on people, jumping up at the window, and then it's, then, it, then they are also tending to grab with their mouth. So they're going to be like grabbing items off the shelf, but then they also may start grabbing the sleeves of people and their clothing when they reach to pet, or grabbing around the neck and the mouth of another dog. This is, a, this is what becomes reactive and aggressive play, but it all starts with this impulsivity in the young dog when they are passing through, ending that first early socialization period of the puppy, and now they're going into, while they are going into a fear period where they may have some, you know, like fears of new things if they have not been socialized to them, they're also becoming more, you know, physically developed. They're stronger in their body. They're uh, more agile. And if they, they have not learned in that early, you know, six to eight week of age up to about 12 to 14 week of age time, how to come when called, come away from things that they shouldn't be at. And when they are like approaching another dog or sniffing items or when being petted, they, they need to receive rewarding for not grabbing with the hand, not being so exuberant. Let's call it that, that exuberance, which prepares them when they get into this impulsive period to have some impulse control, it's a foundational skill. So if our puppies miss getting that, and a lot of our puppies right now have, because we did, they didn't have puppy class to go to, or people were not clear if they could go to a puppy class, even if it was offered in their community. Thirdly, if we have a puppy class with more than six puppies in it, quite frankly, that's too many puppies in a class. The teacher cannot give enough attention or individualized quick instruction to participants to help them, like to help tell them right there how to correctly reward this puppy, how to guide the puppy away, or how to use products like Adaptal right there. And this family then misses important instruction and then they struggle with this at home. I had a case like this exactly yesterday. So um, fine, if for whatever reasons they couldn't get the class, they didn't get the class, there wasn't a class offered, what well, classes were there are now really full because they couldn't you know, get in earlier in the year. We now have a four, a four month old, five month old, six month old dog who is now nipping and mouthing at hands when being reached for to be petted, who when you walk up to them is jumping up on top of you much more rapidly and intensely and tending to use their mouth to grab on clothing or grab on hands or grab on a companion dog in play. They're doing a lot more than mouthing and biting. Okay, so they're using their mouth and their drive, let's call it that, their drive to, ooh, what's that? I wanna go check that out. I wanna find it out, it is much stronger now at this age. And they need to learn how to slow their body and their brain down so they can stop and assess. They can say, oh, before I jump on your dog, are you looking happy that I'm coming at you? Or are you staring at me? And that's what can reduce the fighting and things. Or learn, I have come up to the human and, oh, that's right. I get more petting. I get more reward when I keep all four feet on the floor. <laughs> because as I call that my four on the floor, that four on the floor is teaching them to control the impulse to jump up. And it's important that the dogs learn to do this, not by being commanded to do it, but by we've caught, we've caught them, we saw them right before the jump and we rewarded that. That we're timing the rewards 
for the correct behavior, the correct before they get into the impulsivity to help the dog learn to, oh, this is right, and to hold that like mental state and physical state longer, which that pause, if you want to call it, is the impulse control. And then with continued rewarding and shaping the behavior, that's how you get control in the household. Um, you know, control the dog and preventing the jumping up and biting. Okay, so that's what impulsivity is. Now, what happens, so again, impulsivity is that rushing right up, rushing up, running up, body bumping, body slamming. That's being, oh, I just gotta touch it and feel it. And it typically starts in puppies of all breeds by the time they're four months of age. In some, you might see it starting up as young as 12 weeks, but typically by four months of age. Now, a really timid puppy, one who is having a lot of fear, may not show so much impulsivity, but there'll be some. The more confident dogs, they are much more impulsive because they wanna get out and find out about the world, okay? So rushing up, running up, jumping up. The second way of reflection of impulsivity is the barking. Now the barking is not just, oh, what's that, bark, bark, or barking. It's when the dog comes up and is like, bark, 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 like they're barking for attention. They're, they're barking at a lot of things because what the dog is doing is they're using their bark to try to get, like, get human to get up, go take me out. Or the other dog, start to jump on me because I want to jump on you. It's this progression. So they're using their bark, like to think of the bark as they're trying to activate something in their environment, another human being, another animal. And that's why some of these dogs, you may wonder, why is he barking at the vacuum cleaner? Like something inanimate because they know like that vacuum cleaner may run sometimes. Okay, the last thing is the progression of this rushing on up and barking is to start to use the mouth. They're so moving so quickly mentally, like I really wanna have it, I really wanna get that. And as a young puppy, they were doing a lot of mouthing and maybe investigating behavior, but they did not learn bite inhibition and they did not learn how to come away from things they were mouthing to in, to reduce you know the mouthiness and that so the progression is they are physically rushing up and then they use their mouth and when they grab now they're grabbing and they're biting down because it's all a part of that um just adrenaline rush escalation up of their body and all this you know running up or barking and then jump up and grab happens in less than one second now that's what the impulsivity is now what's happens typically is that the dog has rushed up, run up, and um, or when you go to pick the dog up, or you've reached to pet the dog, that they have now jumped up and they've grabbed. And our typical response is then to pull away. I mean, that, that is just kind of natural, right? But what happens is, because they are so mentally ramped up and physically ramped up, okay, let's, I'm just doing some demonstrating now, my stuffed dog. Uh, Little dog is jump up or big dog. Grab my sleeve. I pull away while he's holding my sleeve. Okay, he's still got to, because remember, he's now chomped down harder. He's holding on harder. It's not just a little lit and let go. No, he's hanging on. So he's hanging on. I pull my arm away, and now this dog pulls away even harder, right? Or clamps down harder. It is called the oppositional reflex. It's a reflex of, uh, you know, I grab the collar and the dog pulls away. I pull again, he pulls away harder. It's like a tug of war. So the oppositional reflex gets activated very quickly in these highly impulsive dogs, which results in them literally, I mean, those of you who are dog trainers, behaviorists, and we see it too sometimes <clears throat> in the veterinary office, dog grabs a hold of the sleeve and now he's hanging on and of course naturally your client is trying to pull away or they'll just stand there with the dog hanging off their sleeve and the dog may then be just hanging on and hanging on but any movement any movement from the arm any movement of the body continues to activate the oppositional reflex and that's why these dogs then not only continue to keep grabbing and hanging on, now the grab or the bite becomes more intense 
and they may start to growl, it shifts over to aggression. It because, and it's because of the mentally agitated state that they are in. So then when they're growling and they're becoming aggressive, and okay, typically what's gonna happen in most homes is dogs hanging off your sleeve, you're standing there, you're trying to get them off, people are saying out, out, or no. They're commanding. The voice is another sensory stimulus. So just like grabbing and pulling on the collar or he's hanging off my sleeve and my arm moves, this is a physical stimulus that agitates or activates even more that oppositional reflex to bite harder, to pull harder. Your voice, that commanding is also a stimulus and can also intensify that reflex, the oppositional reflex of pulling away or shaking or biting down harder, which is why the command, part of why the commanding doesn't work. Now, the second reason why is when they are this highly aroused, they are this worked up, their frontal cortex is shut off. The blood is not going there. They cannot hear a command. So this is why the out and off and down are saying, ow, 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 like the things that have been taught for some primary general training do not work and make it worse. All right, so what do we, what typically happens then? Well, you're not, you're hanging off my sleeve. So then the client or the owner will take their hands and roll, you know, now if they, they'll, they'll be prying the dog's mouth open, okay, to let go of your sleeve. All right, so it may work to get your sleeve gone, yet most of these dogs will then want to just chomp again. They'll just want to grab at your hand, grab at your arm again, Oftentimes, so let's say I pry this dog's mouth open off my sleeve, and then he flips and he bites my hand. And the reason is because he's already so high up in this grabbing and physical activation of the oppositional reflex. It's, it's again, the touch on the face has him just want to go after the hand. Then the dog, and it's also secondly, very confrontational. Now I'm forcing him to open his mouth and the dog is then learning hands around the face, hands around the mouth, are going to be pinching on my lips, pinching on my, uh, you know, pinching on my cheeks. Uh, and it, it's all going to be very confrontational. So then when we have another time, the dog goes to jump up and the person goes to reach for the head, the dog goes straight to biting their hand because once that hand is bitten, it leaves them alone, they don't touch them, woo, and they get back. And the dog learns that biting works. Biting works to get that forceful handling to stop. And because of repeated times of this, and this is happening, this jumping up and grabbing, it can easily be happening at least 20 times a day in the home with these impulsive dogs. We don't get the full you know, the full, every single time the dog has done a little jump or a little grab and they let go, we hear the stories about when they do the big grab and the person has bruises on their arms or holes in their shirts or they have had actual puncture wounds on their hands. But because of the repeated practicing of this and the repeated pushing the dog off, grabbing the collar to just hold them down, smaller dogs are getting picked up and held really tight, muzzles held tight, put in maybe a crate or a carrier or something just to say, sell down and get out of here. Then, the, then when the client wants to go clip the leash on, this, let me get my collar right, this just reaching with the hand now is a trigger for the dog to bite your hand because they've learned, well, other times when your hand is reaching for me, in, you're gonna be pinching my mouth, you're going to be, you know, pulling my mouth open. So the dog now generalizes their flip to bite, and this is the handling aggression, the flip to bite on the hand for any kind of clipping the leash on the collar, brushing, and even sometimes petting over the head, um, you know, checking the ear, wiping the face to get mud or food off the face, etc. So this is how it progresses, you know, with time, and in these puppies especially, four-month-old, five-month-old puppy, six-month-old puppy, any struggle, when they first start to struggle, that is resisting 
the physical touch and the hold. And the puppy is doing this oppositional reflex. So the tighter you hold them, the more you just hold them down like this, then it increases, it increases then their fear in their mentally, though they can't physically resist. In the small breed dogs, they can't physically resist. People will hold them so tight. Yet they remember that and then they, they develop the fear of the hands and the conflict aggression with the owner so that now when you go to reach to pick them up, they're immediately flipping on you and biting you or struggling all over like a little whirling dervish and you can't even hardly touch them. You cannot wipe their feet. You cannot wipe their face uh, or in play when they're playing like people are playing tug of war games, you know, things that get the dog to jump up and to grab. Now they may go right for the hand, even though it's in play. They're still going right for the hand and they're biting on the hand, biting on the toy, growling, and become very highly agitated very quickly where you, because now their brain is so uh, amped up, you know, so agitated, and their body, it is shutting down this frontal cortex so you cannot call them away. It does, calling them away, they can't hear that, that won't work. Ignoring them, they're just gonna keep coming after you because you're present. And you're gonna go from sitting to standing or even just your movement to walk away is enough to activate them to jump up on you and then we get back in this whole scenario, okay? So the, let's remember, so the, the progression of impulsivity, oppositional reflex, and then going into biting is this. So we start with like, let's just say the jump. Sorry, let me go again. So where it actually starts with is the puppy or dog may have walked up to you and they've either bumped you and that's to try to get you to pet them or get up or do something. They bumped you or maybe they're like staring, like giving a, a quick, sorry, I'm going to start this look, like a quick look at your hand, a look at you, okay? And that's to get you to get up and do something. Uh, Get the ball, get the toy. Okay. So body bumping or looking. I mean, some dogs are more physical than others. The bumping, that body bumping, the body slamming, body bumping, that tends to be our dogs who are over 50 pounds at this age. In general, your Labradors, Golden Retrievers, Rottweilers, Dobermans, Huskies, you know, the list is long. The ones that I find tend to do like the look first, <laughs> and then it's stare, and then they're jumping up on you. These tend to be the smaller breed dogs, usually under 30 pounds at this weight. And those between 30 and 50 pounds, eh, they're kind of 50-50 either way. All right, this is where it starts. This is gonna last about 0.2 seconds. Just like the lab regression, 0.2 seconds with each step up is pretty normal for normal dog brain function. All right, so they start with just a little body bump on you or that look. Now, if you do not, do not reinforce staying at that level, in other words, and I'll get to that in a minute how we deal with this, then the dog goes up to the next level higher, meaning more forceful, like, no, I really want you to get up. I really want you to do something. I want you to, they shove the toy at you. They're jumping up and now they're grabbing at your hand to get your hand to throw the toy or do something, okay? So it goes from look to grab. It may go to stare. Now they're very focused on, say, your hand or what they want you to do. Now, once they've grabbed, and, of course, they have adult teeth now. Remember the adult case? All of the incisors are adult by this age. We're talking about, or even at four months of age, we have the majority of the adult incisors. The canines are coming in. And the canines will be in position in most of these dogs by six months of age, at the start of six months of age. So the teeth are large and they are painful and their jaw is stronger and their musculature is bigger. So when they do this grab, it hurts us. Or we're like, oh, now you're on my sleeve again. And remember, in within 0.2 seconds of one movement away for the grab, now they're down on bite down. And the one who is doing more staring with any kind of hand movement or touch, they're gonna flip to bite. Again, this is what I see in a lot of smaller breed dogs. They'll go to bite and they'll also go to a lot more of the 
like head flip bite, very fast movement to get the bite in. And I, that I believe is because these little dogs just, it's just easier that people were much more, like the owner was skillful at grabbing them quick before the dog could get much like directed grab at a lower level. So the little dogs become that whirling dervish you can't even hardly touch at this point when you get any kind of movement, okay? Movement or touch. All right, so now they're biting down. Now they're like bite, and let's just call it flipping. Okay, and then this is where, this is where we're like stuck. What do we do? How do we get them to let go of us? How do we, how do we get them to stop flipping out and flipping all around? Because any movement, any touch, any noise is now going to get them to bite hard and just hang on or bite repeatedly. Sorry, it's hard to read my writing. Anyway, biting repeatedly, like a little land shark. How many of you have said that about a young Yorkshire Terrier in your office who's five months old? I have because that's about what they're like. And so, well, what do we do now? How do we get this better? That's why we're here today, right? All right, so where it needs to start is, as I said, the brain and the body are both agitated. And in that moment, you may, you know, you may be in that moment of, you do, we just gotta, we just gotta help you get both your brain and your body slowed down. And, well, medications are definitely helpful, definitely, um, you know, needed in some of these highly impulsive dogs. When you've walked in the door and that dog is hanging off your sleeve, you don't have medication that's going to work right then. You don't have a tool that may be effective immediately within five to ten minutes to help this young dog become both mentally more calm and what do you do to stop this just downward spiral into biting, grabbing, and nipping, okay? So let's, we're in that scenario now, okay? We have not consulted with our veterinarian for measure supplements. That's another lecture another time. What am I gonna do in the moment right now as I'm trying to just walk in the door without my dog hanging off the sleeve and chomping on me or wiping his feet because it's snowy and muddy outside without getting my hands all bitten up? Okay, two things. Um, Adaptal, I do not work for SIVA. I'm not getting paid by SIVA. <laughs> Adaptal, I feel, is really required for these dogs. They, they need some kind, they need mental calming, and this is over-the-counter, no contraindication with any medical condition. It, all dogs have the receptors for it. You can buy it at PetSmart, oh, just walk right to the store and get it. At least if you have it, having the Adaptal spray or the adaptal collar. Now, frankly, on these impulsive dogs, I start with the spray because the act of putting a collar on them is very agitating. So the adaptal spray, okay, if you have it, I want the owner spraying it on their legs, spraying it on their hands, so they're emitting it when they come in the room and around this animal. If we can spray it on our hand, you can rub it on the chest. Now, as I said, I do not work for SIVA, they do say, do not put it on the animal's body. I've never been able to get an answer from SIVA as to why they advise it. So my best assumption is that because it is an alcohol-based product, if they gave approval for spraying it on the animal, people would be spraying it in their face and getting the product maybe in their eyes that could cause harm and damage. So to spray it on your hand and rub it on their chest, because remember, the adaptal has to be absorbed through the roof of the mouth. That is how the product is getting to them to calm them. It's gonna take about five minutes for calming, but it's something that's gonna work at least within five minutes. Now, that's, that's as much as I can say for a product to help with mental calming. The second thing is we have to get two th a couple things. We have to stop all movement. And this is what is kind of tough for some of our uh, owners to really understand, meaning Again, I'm just going to use this little guy because he's easier to hold. So let's say I'm going to, oh, I need to take you out for your walk. And I'll get my leash again. I need to take you out for your walk. And I call my little dog up to me and he happily comes up and I have nothing. Okay, this is a typical scenario. I don't have a treat. We're just going to go outside. And as I reach my hand 
I'm reaching my hand to clip the leash on. He's like, da, 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 and he starts running all around. I'm like, oh, good Lord. And I go to grab him to hold him still to clip the leash on. And he's going flip, 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 flip. This is the problem, right? Okay, so this is what you're going to have your client do. We're going to start with, and I'm going to go ahead and change the camera around a little bit so you can watch me on the floor here to demonstrate. Do this, sorry. Oh, no, you went off. Oh, because I turned the light off. Oh, good. You can see my stuffed animals down there. Okay. All right, so let me see where I can see my little dog. Okay. Uh, there we go. There's my... Okay, this is a little dog. I'm going to do a little dog. I'm going to do the big dog. Okay. So for a little dog, you're going to have your owner, first of all, the puppy is, not, is going to earn their meal. They're not earning treats. All of the food for the puppy is going to come for this kind of handling and impulse control. I go through this in my puppy certification program, the four hour race certification program, with a lot of videos showing how we do this, do this technique with dogs, uh, with some video demonstration um, and, and that. Anyway, the owner's got a handful of the food. We don't even have the leash yet. We want to toss the food nugget on the ground one at a time and the puppy will come and he'll be eating the food. And with his head down, the puppy's head is down, so he's not seeing your hand. Go to just reach, do not touch the puppy yet. As long as the puppy's staying, eating those few nuggets, you continue to toss one, puppy eats nugget as you just touch the collar. This is how you're doing the first steps of desensitization and counter conditioning to touch while keeping the puppy's body calm, four feet on the floor and not jumping up and all over. Now, when the puppy has done this, he's eaten a few pieces of food for just touch on the collar. Now I'm going to take with my hand and like a roll of coins, have one nugget at a time for the puppy to eat. And now I'll actually put my finger through the collar, take my hand away, then take the food away. So he's eaten maybe one nugget, two nugget, hand away, hand away. I still have five other nuggets in my hand. Then I'm just going to wait a second or two because this waiting a second or two the puppy should sit and wait. If the puppy starts jumping up on me, like, oh, I want the food, I'm going to turn my body away. And this is really important. Your client has to learn to completely turn their body away or get up and walk away and leave that puppy alone for like 10 minutes. Um, a specific amount of time where the puppy is not looked at, touched at, touched, or talked to. He gets no interaction from the owner immediately within one second of I jumped up on you okay and usually the puppies who have done that with one or two times of the client just getting up and leaving them alone then we go back and we try this again the puppies will stay with their feet on the floor they won't be jumping up as much that is learning impulse control at the very first steps but we have to break down the act of attaching this leash into every single step that leads to connecting the leash. This also too is where instruction has not been clear enough for that every single step of the act of, act of clipping the leash must be paired with a food reward and the puppy's head down, not flipping four feet on the floor. So fine, say our puppy now is holding his place and with my, I'm right-handed, <laughs> With my left hand, I've got the puppy eating a little bit, and I just tap the leash to the collar, hand away, hand away. Puppy's doing good. Give him one or two seconds. Okay, you're being a good puppy. Let's go again. Eating, maybe I have to rotate the collar, hand away, hand away. See, that was a lot of handling. And for the puppy to stay thinking about the food in my hand, not flipping, not biting, and keeping four feet on the floor, all of that is now shaping the control of his impulse to want to just grab the leash in my hand and changing it. He's now learning how to, oh yeah, there's food in your hand. Oh yeah, it's okay to have this clipped on. So finally, I get to where I can do this and I can clip the leash on. Now many of these puppies are grabbing the leash and they're dragging the leash all around. Everybody thought it was cute. It is not cute. And for that, then you can soak the leash in bitter apple, jalapeno pepper juice. I do advise using a chain leash, but 
some of these puppies, because remember, they didn't get much socialization, they may now be afraid of the sound of the chain dragging on the floor. It is going to be a little bit of trial and error, but we cannot have the puppy chewing on the leash. Now, the puppy gets a hold of the leash, okay? You do not pull back on the leash. Do not do the, you know, either side, holding it still until he releases, then pulling it away. Because the puppy rarely is going to let go. And again, that can be kind of confrontational and it's not easy to do, you know. So if the puppy has grabbed the leash, what you need to have your client do is just either drop the leash and as soon as the puppy drops, I mean, when as soon as the puppy drops the leash, like lets it go, boom, you give a reward and then another one and another one and another one. Those rewards need to come within one second of continuing to do the correct behavior, which means not grabbing the leash. For this puppy to learn to just, I can see the leash and not grab it. See, that's another exercise in impulse control. Okay, we have our big dogs, don't we? And this is my big dog over here. So with the big dog, it's the same kind of steps, yet most of these big dogs uh, get more into just the body pushing, leaning, right? All that. So when they, when they, are, you can tell, and these big dogs, they come up and their body starts moving towards you before they actually make the lean. This is where the client, again, the big dog is gonna earn all his food during this uh, training, not out of a bowl. We skip the bowls, bowls are gone. And when the dog first come, is approaching the owner, and I'm going to do this standing up here so that because that's usually how we do it with the big dogs. Hang on, let me adjust my camera again. Oopsie. Let's see. Yep, there you can see them. Okay, so let's say I'm the owner. I've just walked in the room, and now my dog is starting to take one, two steps, and we know what's going to happen. One, two, and then he's going to be boom, right? So when I see my dog and he's one, two, I am going to get the reward to him here, maybe two feet away from me before he can jump up on me. Or I take it and I just toss it right down in front of him like we did with the little dog. Why? Because that gets big dog instead of like, oh, I want to rush up on you to go, oh, I want to rush up. Oh, what was that? And put his head down. Sorry, he's not as flexible as my little dog. Anyway, put his head down to eat. When his head is down, when he's one foot from me, I'm gonna do a second one and a third one because it is helping him to learn to keep eating, like eat, putting his head down, not because he's gonna be the one who wants to go right up to grabbing me. So if his head is down on the floor and his four feet are on the floor, he cannot be grabbing my shirt, grabbing my you know, sweater. He's learning how to be one or two feet from me without jumping up all over me. And then I will practice coming up to him. And again, it'll be eat, touch the collar, hand away, food away. With the big dogs, you could kneel by their side because we want to prevent the clients, you know, from doing all this looming bending over. And many of them do. It's just kind of our natural trait. But a lot of coaching with your clients. Oh, I'm cutting myself off. Sorry, folks. Uh, there we go. So one of the things I really love about doing the video chat consult is that I, I'm, I'm like this right now with you, live streaming, saying, okay, Jane, stand up. Let's do this with the dog. And Jane's bending over like this. I say, Jane, stand up straight, huh? Stand up straight, shoulders back. Okay, bend your knees. Good job, Jane, keep bending your knees. <laughs> That's how the client then can experience doing it themselves in their home with their dog who normally is jumping all over them and grabbing them and the timing then because I'll be calling out reward, 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 reward. And because I've told the client before we even started, get the handful of food, roll it out like a hand, like a roll of coins in your hand, then typically the client will do it and they will see that the dog is keeping his feet on the floor. They just see that first shred, that very first glimmer of, oh my gosh, he actually was here in front of the door without jumping all over me as I attached the leash. And that very first glimmer 
for that dog to experience doing it is that first, first foundational experience to then be able to continue to do it. And the first foundational experience for the client to actually do it, to actually see and realize, wow, you're right, yeah. It does take 15 steps for me to get my jacket, put it on and attach the leash to this dog. It's, it's a 15 step process. And each of those 15 steps must be matched with rewarding for keeping your feet on the floor, not staring at me, keeping your mouth off my jacket and that. Now the real, real, how should I say it, tricky part, but once they've done, at least through like a training or coaching session, the client is, understands now, ah, it's catching them before they're jumping up on me when I do this. Yes, the dog's gonna jump up, the dog's gonna grab onto my shirt and be like this, right? What do I do now? Okay, when, with these really, especially the big muscular dogs, uh, because of course they're bigger and they cause more injury and their bites are more damaging, injurious. And you know what? I've had three calls in the past two weeks about these seven month old dog, highly, it's impulsivity. They're not fear-based aggressive, but they're biting down and bruising and euthanasia is on the table. People are considering euthanasia because of how intense this dog is. If you can't get better, what are we gonna do? Okay. So in the moment, they are, there's gonna be a moment, they don't get this all figured out once, right? So they're gonna grab a hold of the jacket and you're like, okay, now what? Because we know if I pull back, he's pulling harder. If I try to grab this, he could grab my hand. What do I do now? When with our big breed dogs, as we are you know, doing the drop, drop the food on the floor, the dog puts his head down, good, yes, make a marker sound. If, you're, if your client is already good with clicker training, you can use the clicker, but in the moment when I'm ready to get up from the couch and the dogs grab my shirt, I may not have the clicker. So let's make a natural sound from the human that is now the marker for the dog not engaging, like not biting on this, getting the reward, feet on the floor, head down. Because that's when the dog is thinking and giving that marker sound in the moment in the moment when they first grab your shirt as you're standing still, because remember, standing totally still, no movement, is what can help decrease getting into the oppositional reflex spiral. In that moment, if I go, I, I just, I'm silent in the moment, see that your clients can tell, the moment they can start to see like the jaw relax, like, uh, good dog. The dog will usually continue to relax the jaw because you are praising the correct behavior, which is you're starting to release. You stand or actually so good job. Yes. It may not as exuberant as you might be when you're doing the marking on the floor, but it's the same marking because you're marking the correct behavior. You let me go. Letting you go is decreasing the impulsivity. That is learning impulse control also. So the dog starts to, uh, you can see it, right? Their little jaws quiver. Ah. As soon as they let go, good dog, that was a good dog. Yes, they were a good dog because they let you go. Then, of course, we're gonna think of, you know, reward them, let's do the four on the floor, do whatever you wanted to do, walk across the house and go to the bathroom. But think then, okay, why, why? Why was he triggered up to jump up on me? Okay, we just had a ton of snow and I was busy with a phone call. He didn't get outside for his exercise. He did not, you know, it, uh, our routine was a little bit messed up. In which case then, yeah, I get it, life happens, but this is why having dog food in your pocket is the way everybody in the house has to live with dogs like this because then, you know, you might get the dog out for a walk in the evening, yet we really need to be doing this training for the rest of the evening. Every time you get up and down from the chair to put that good bank account deposit in that he's not jumping up and grabbing you, when you get up and down from the chair. Um, there's a lot to, you know, impulsivity, impulse control and this building up because this all becomes a part of that whole um, spectrum, you know, going on into reactive dog play and handling aggression, et cetera. Uh, one last thing I do wanna say also about these really impulsive dogs, both big and small. At the veterinary practice, at home also, for uh, husbandry, brushing, cleaning, you know, wiping their feet, uh, giving them medication. Strong 
restraint hold. Like, you know, I'll call it the traditional handling. We've made some wonderful advances with, you know, fear-free and low-stress handling, yet it is not, is not the standard in most veterinary practices. And you get that 12-week-old puppy who, you know, the tech might be sort of holding them. And I go to give the vaccination. You know, I, I wipe with the alcohol and we get the quick head flip. That right there, that's an impulsive puppy. And if the assistant holds on tighter, because now the puppy is usually going up their arm, and they just go, okay, let me just hold them tighter. You're gonna get a puppy who struggles more because you are activating that oppositional reflex. And then that puppy is going to associate the struggle on the head, even though he's not biting, because you can hold him on tight enough, as I give the vaccination, that's why at then the four month of age exam, they come in and they immediately go and they bite your hand. It's because of that strong holds, they become much more aggressive, especially in our big dogs, those 50 pound dogs, when they are coming in for an anal gland check or nails. This is where we really lose it on that six month old dog who's over 50 pounds, who comes in to get the nails trimmed. They're already struggling about the feet being handled, and now we call two or three people in to just hold them firmly. And maybe the dog is standing still as you're holding him firmly, but then that's why when he comes in again at eight, nine months of age, you walk in the room and he's jumping up on you, grabbing your sleeve and biting you. So when you have an impulsive animal, again, please take my puppy's behavior certification course. Uh, I also show a lot of this on the two hour puppy for the vet clinic, you know, course I have on my, it's all on my shop and my website. You really have to work on, we're gonna target the puppy to an object with the reward. We're gonna use maybe something like a collar hold. We're gonna use a daptil on this puppy and we're really gonna time it. He's eating, he's eating, I give the prick, prick goes away, then the reward goes away. Cause we're helping the puppy to learn impulse control in the veterinary office while we're combining the desensitization and counter conditioning to handling because we have to handle these puppies. Also, the puppies should be getting some handling at home correctly. Um, my two hour stay at home puppy socialization course, the whole second hour is on for the owner to handle the feet correctly. Time get rewards like I showed you, attaching the leash, uh, putting on the collar, even some positioning, laying the puppy on their side while rewarding them the correct way because this is the handling that we all need to do. Okay, I know I covered a lot here, <laughs> um, but I hope, you, uh, I hope you appreciated it. Please leave your comments below. Um, if you have any comments or questions or want me to develop on this topic a bit more, I'm happy to do so. I'm pretty much alternating each week, you know, feline topic, a canine topic with my Facebook Lives. Um, and as we go into 2021, I'm going to continue with the Facebook Lives. I may adjust it back to maybe 1230 Central Time, but um, I am uploading these videos onto my YouTube channel. So please be certain to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's DrSallyJFoot.com. And you can always catch this again. You can share it with your clients. Uh, those of you that have training centers and um, groomers, daycare operators, uh, clinics, you have the permission to share a video like this in your newsletter, on your Facebook page, on your website, just you know, a direct link to my YouTube channel would be fine. Uh, really consider taking that puppy certification course. It uh, gives you a um, on demand, gives you a year of support from myself to the certified puppy behavior consultant. I give you the template, the uh, syllabuses for a four week puppy class, which a lot of it's really focused on impulse control and socialization, as well as um, protocols for common puppy problems to do a puppy consult with and it's supported by me so if you have a really difficult you know more rambunctious puppy then you can email me and any of those of you the puppy consultant who's working with a veterinarian I also support the veterinarian through the certified puppy consultant. so in other words if the veterinarian is like oh I don't know if this puppy needs medication or not fine I will answer that question to the veterinarian and as my support to you the puppy behavior consultant well, everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, I will be doing Facebook Live next week. Maybe I'll have a little blower or something because we're coming into New Year's. Uh, I hope everybody stays healthy, uh, supports uh, continued wearing our masks, continuing our social distancing, 
and uh, vaccination for our frontline workers because the more that they get it and they show that it's working for them, it's going to trickle on down through the rest of the population. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.